is my YouTube channel where I chat about things that I have been making recently here in Sacramento, California. Welcome. If this is your first time checking out a video like this, it is essentially crafty show and tell. I am primarily a knitter, so there's going to be a lot of knitted things on here, but I also sew, spin, dye, weave. Uh, if you click that subscribe button, you can follow along with things that I am working on, and I'll also show off things that I have recently finished. I have a lot to talk about this week, so let's, let's just jump right in. What am I wearing? This is my first finished object. It is called the Astragal sweater. This is a sweater that was in the Sea Change issue of Pom Pom Quarterly magazine, issue number 30. Um, I absolutely love this sweater. I originally intended to finish this for Stitches West 2020. Um, didn't end up going to Stitches West this year, but this is still my entry for the Festimal. I think once this video gets up, you still will have like a day to get entries in. Maybe, sorry if I'm giving you wrong information. It is a knit along that Tommy of Scroll Pie Productions is putting on where you can knit things for an upcoming festival or yarn that you've purchased from a festival, yarn that's inspired by a festival. And since yarn festivals probably aren't happening in the near future, um, she's encouraging people to support makers, yarn dyers that were going to be vending at festivals that have been postponed. So I think it's a really fun way for us to connect even though we're apart and I'm really excited too because I actually finished it and put up a project on Ravelry and actually submitted a finished object into that uh, YouTube group. So I never actually do that. I often participate in knit-alongs but never actually upload <laughs> my finished object. So yay for me. So let's talk about this sweater. I made it out of Vivo yarn. Vivo is a gorgeous yarn by Rosa Pomar. I'm looking around because I knew I had the tag here on the floor somewhere. Mm. Oh, let's see if I can grab it. This is Vivo. I love the tag because it has like a badass granny with a tattoo. Yeah. This is a sport weight yarn. It, is it breed specific? I know everything is sourced in Portugal and so you're supporting the Portuguese wool industry when you're buying Rosa Pomar yarn, which is super cool. And don't you love this color? This is the Pecan colorway. I got this yarn from Wild Hand in Philly, if I didn't say that yet. That's where I picked it up. That is a super cute shop in Philadelphia, Wild Hand. You should check it out if you're ever visiting the Philly area. When I saw this yarn, I knew that I had to have it. They describe it as a versatile and hard wearing non superwash yarn made from fine Portuguese wool. Um, it is certainly not super wash. It is certainly hard wearing. It is a, what people call a rustic wool. And I love, I love a good rustic wool. But as I was knitting with this, I was a little concerned that maybe this is gonna be a little, a little too rustic for my taste. I wanted to be able to wear this as I'm wearing it today without a shirt underneath. Um, when I blocked it, it certainly did bloom as yarns like this will and it softened up. But if I'm being entirely honest, yeah, I probably want to be wearing like a camisole under it. Um, I'm not terribly uncomfortable because I love yarn so much. I don't know, I guess I'm kind of willing to have a little bit of the like scratch factor on me. But I think the way I'm typically going to wear this is how I wore it yesterday. I'll insert a picture of how I wore it yesterday up now. Um, I wore it over a dress. It was a tank dress and yeah, I didn't feel any of the rusticness of this yarn at all. So I don't want to scare you off of knitting with Vivo yarn. Wear those rustic wools, they're the best. Um, they're so fun to knit with and this really did just bloom in a beautiful way when I blocked it. 
Yeah. Definitely wore this yesterday when it was like only 80% dry. Do you guys ever do that? I get so excited about your knitwear that you just you have to put it on. My body heat finished drying it, right? One, two points about the sweater that I should mention. First off being that I did lengthen it. Let's see here, my cat's on my lap. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you. There we go. Yep, you can see how I, well, and he's gone. <laughs> how I lengthened it, but yeah, I'll put in the picture so you can really see the sweater. It is a cropped sweater. I lengthened it by two inches, but bear in mind that my body is essentially already cropped. So cropped sweaters work great on me. I have a really short torso. The other point to mention is the sample in here. This is the example of the sweater. Notice the neckline, it's really quite snug. Right, it's really, really snug around her neck. Every example of the sweater that I've seen on Ravelry and Instagram, the neck drapes open more like mine, which I like okay. I really like where this detail's lying. I actually like it quite better than where it's lying on the model. Um, so just, just bear that in mind that when I didn't aggressively block this out at all, I was actually quite delicate with it. If you're planning on making this sweater, chances are it'll probably end up looking a little bit more like mine than the example in Pom Pom Quarterly. But yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe if you use the yarn recommended in Pom Pom that you're not gonna have this, this stretching out around your neckline. I have a lot to talk about, so let's move on to my next finished object. I actually had this finished for the podcast last week, but I just had so much to talk about we didn't get to it. This is another gypsum skirt. It's a pattern by, pretty sure it's by So Liberated. I'll include the link down below. This fabric is really what makes this skirt super fun. A little outside of my comfort zone. I normally like making more neutral things. But when I saw this on Shop of the Mercery's sale, I knew I had to pick it up. It's a cotton blend. Ooh, I'm not really remembering the fabric composition. But what really makes it is the print. I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this in the summertime. So, do you have any go-to sewing patterns? I've knit, knit, I've probably sewed three gypsum skirts at this point. I know how to do it all. I don't really have to read the instructions anymore. It's very intuitive to me, so I like being able to have a pattern that I can just bang out when I need to. Do you have a pattern like that? I'm always looking for new sewing patterns to add to my repertoire. Ideally ones that come in a like wide, inclusive range of sizes. This would be great. Let's talk about my last finished object, which I have some mixed feelings talking about. But yeah, I think, well, it just came out. <laughs> I think I should still talk about it. I have been making masks, and most of the things that I talk about on here bring me uh, tremendous joy. But making masks, uh, I want to cry just talking about it. Make, uh, makes me very sad and angry because we shouldn't have to be making masks. But yes, I have been making some masks out of scraps. The pattern that I decided to use is the pattern by Gather Here. It's a shop in Boston. I'll include a link to their video down below. Um, oh yeah, I have a lot of feelings about making masks. <laughs> I agonized over all of the different patterns that were out there, trying to decide on the best one. Um, if you're able to make a mask and you're facing similar struggles, like just make one. And if you're able to make some for your neighbors and family members that need one. But also, you know, uh, you do what you need to do in this time. Like, don't pressure yourself to um, 
be making anything that is gonna harm you in any way. Like, look, look out, look out for you. Take care of yourself during this time. Oof, Cause yeah, stuff's rough, man. Um, what I like about this pattern is that includes a pocket here in the back to put in a filter or additional layers of fabric. And the one thing that I did add to the pattern, I haven't clipped any of the ends because uh, I was just sewing them all kind of batch style really quickly. I added a little channel at the top and bottom so that um, whoever I give this to, they can put in a paper clip here and form it to their nose to help protect and keep in and have the mask be more form-fitting to your face. I also didn't tie off the little elastic ends. I ran out of elastic, so I've also been using like cut up ends of t-shirts. They're very stretchy and I've not been tying them off so they're customizable to fit people's heads. <sighs> Making stuff is always a way. It's just like another way that I interact with and make meaning of the world and making masks is definitely a point of reflection at this current time in our world and also just on the power of craft. Like I found some moments where I was making the masks where I was able to truly get into the flow of just focusing on the rhythm of the machine and ironing the masks and like I was just very very present in making the masks where I completely forgot about the global pandemic and what I was even making the masks for, which is interesting, like it speaks to the power of craft. Um, and it also taught me some important lessons about taking a step back, looking at the bigger picture, always remembering the why of what you're making, um, agonizing over which pattern, which was going to be the best, like am I going to make a mistake with whatever I'm making? Um, was really missing the point of creating a tool to help protect people. Like that's really what making the masks is about. The masks don't have to be cute. They shouldn't be cute. Nothing is cute about what's going on right now. Um, yeah. Enough about masks. Let's move on to something that is bringing me tremendous joy. Oh, I love this so much. This is my wave of change jacket. And the pattern is great. It's designed with a bulky yarn. I am knitting it using one strand of Wool in the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton. Let's see if I have it. So here is that yarn. The color I'm using is Timber Wolf. It's 100% cotton yarn. Really, really soft, but it is cotton yarn. So if I knit a whole sweater out of just this, it's gonna stretch and it's gonna grow. It's gonna be really heavy. And I do love that it's like pretty heavy and cozy. But what I'm holding with it are Merino Singles dyed by Tommy of Moonstone Dye Works with the Squirrel Pie Productions podcast. I'm using, um, she had a club, I think it was called a club, where you um, paid in and got three skeins of yarn over three months. I think that's called a club. It was all very like star celestial based and these are those three colors that are so beautiful. If I'm remembering right, they were called Death of a Star, Stargazing on the Equinox. Oh, I'm forgetting the last name. I'm sorry, I have the ball tag in here somewhere. It'll come back to me. And then I also had a little bit of, oh man. I know one of these is called Venus. Maybe it's one of these. Sorry, I'm forgetting the names. I'll include it down below if I can find all the ball tags, but basically beautiful merino singles dyed by Moonstone Dye Works. Okay, so I'm holding one strand of the wool in the gang and two strands of merino singles throughout. And then 
kind of switching off the merino singles wherever I feel like doing so. I didn't really want it to fade. It looks really great on some people, but it's the fade, I don't know, it's just not my style. So I wanted it to look more scrappy and yeah, more scrappy than faded. I think I've achieved that. These colors are pretty far outside of my typical comfort zone for a garment, but held with the Timberwolf, this is basically a neutral sweater, right? It is the softest, coziest thing, the cotton with the two merino singles. Mm. I love it so much. In fact, knitting it is kind of slow, not because of the project, like this was just going to fly off of your needles, but it's slow because I just keep putting down my needles, and petting it, and looking at it, and loving it, so. So this pattern, it has you knit the sleeves and then pick up the neck and, no, no, you knit, this, you knit the whole body and then you pick up the, the button band. That's what the pattern has you do. But I picked up the button band first because I think I might run low on my favorite yarns that I'm using for this. And I wanted to make sure that I use them for the button band. The pattern also has you use snaps and doesn't include buttonholes, but I put some buttonholes in because I think I'm going to want to use some actual buttons. I've seen a lot of people lengthen this cardigan. I didn't because I think my cotton is still going to stretch a little bit and I got that crop body. <laughs> so the cropped length is just going to be like normal length on me. So what I have left to do are the arms. Hopefully I'll have this done next time I podcast. And because I'm extra and things not lining up really upsets me, <laughs> I, I've actually divided out into equal balls using my scale. I divided what I have left of all of these yarns and I'm gonna write down how many rows of each of the colors I have as I knit the two sleeves. And I know they're gonna still be different because these are like hand dyed speckled yarns and the yarn shifts and changes color within each of the, <laughs> the skeins, but at least we'll have like a general similar color profile going down both sleeves. I just would rather not have a big chunk of blue up here and then it's more pink and then the blue down here, I don't know. I want it to be somewhat cohesive and symmetrical. There are a lot of ends to weave in on this. My friend Eloise of Synthrider Fiber, that's really the reason I'm making this, is she made one recently out of a bunch of, I think she held DK weight together, and I believe she dyed most of it. She has Synthrider Fiber. Not remembering exactly what she used but yeah she had a lot of ends to weave in and who that's not gonna be fun typically I like to weave in my ends as I go so I don't have like a lame thing left to do at the end of my project but who's got time for that yeah have you made the wave of change jacket do you want to I recommend it. It's really fun. And I think it is a fun, since it's a bulky weight project, be really fun stash busting, scrappy project to put stuff together. Especially if you hold one strand of something throughout the whole garment, it makes it a very cohesive look. I don't really want to put this down and move on because it's so soft. The rest of the video can just be me hugging and petting the wave of change, right? Okay, let's move on. This is getting weird. My last work in progress that I'm going to talk about today is the Friendship Ribozo. If you've ever been to Guatemala or know about Guatemalan fashion, you'll know that Ribozos, they're like the poncho style wraps that people wear there. They're often out in the market. Uh, this is a pattern designed by Lucinda Williams. Let me see if I have a picture. If I print it out here. Yeah. 
Lucinda Williams is a shop owner in Montreal, in Quebec. And there's a whole story to go along. Let's just, just hang tight. So this is the Friendship for Bozo. It's beautiful. And in addition to this just being a fabulous pattern, this is Rumpelstiltskin Spring Knit Along Project. And we're doing it because Lucinda, the designer, um, she has a shop in Canada and she shared this idea with a group of shop owners that you could hold mystery quarantine kits, offer kits to your customers um, since because of the quarantine and pandemic, shops are mostly closed. And we have to get creative on ways to get yarn from the shops to people. And one way to do this is this really cool idea of a quarantine mystery kit where customers uh, submitted one word to the shop, Rumpelstiltskin, and we would send out yarn according to that one word. It was really fun putting together these packages, and I hope everyone likes the yarn that we picked out for you. Um, honestly, I didn't pick out that much of it. My fabulous coworker, Emily, is a master at putting these kits together. Really incredible. Um, she could put together like 20 the amount of time it took me to put together one. Um, but yeah, it was a huge success. And so as a thank you to her, and also, you know, it's called the Friendship Rebozo. It seems like a great way to stay connected and celebrate our friendship even though we're apart. We are knitting this project. I love this project because it really showcases the yarn. It's designed using five skeins of Arbor. Arbor is a worsted spun yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. It's DK weight. I'm making mine out of carob. I had Emily pick out my yarn. She did a great job. Um, you use one contrast skein, so my contrast skein I think is Norway, and then the real star of the show is one skein of Dream State. Dream State is the worsted weight yarn by Spin Cycle. The yarn that I'm using is Mississippi Marsala. So the main body, carob. Oh, I love this pairing so much. And then Norway is the contrast. We're like a contrast stripe and bobbles. This is what I'm making my friendship proposal with. It's beginner friendly because it's essentially just a long rectangle that you then add pom poms to and pin at one end. This is as far as I am, and this is nearly one ball of the arbor knitted and done. I did this all last night. It was really fun. Uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, I was going to try and I am a, I knit using my right hand. I want to try and start continental knitting because I often deal with wrist pain in my right hand. And so I started off like this much knitting continental just so fast knitting the way that I knit. It's so hard to do things differently. So I'm just knitting, what is it, English? I always forget what the, the different terms are. But I am just knitting the yarn in my right hand and I'm not switching because it, new things are hard. And I just want to knit a big stock in it square how I know how. And that's okay. Okay, so after I just threw that hissy fit, I encourage you to join this knit along. We put together some kits in the store. If you're interested in one, I'll leave the link to Rumpelstiltskin's Instagram. You just go ahead and message the shop, include your uh, email address, and we'll send you an invoice and send you the yarn. Okay, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to hear about what I've been working on, and as always, 
please leave a comment down below letting me know what you're working on. And things are rough out there. If you want to send me a message, I'm here if you need to talk about anything. I hope you're well. Until next time, take care. Bye.